your spirit. Lord and Father all holy, you willed that your son's cross should become the source of all blessings, the cause of all graces. Grant that we who on earth hold fast to the mysteries of his sacred passion may in heaven enter into the joys of his resurrection. Through Christ our Lord. Jesus is sentenced to death. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. By your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. Then the whole assembly of them arose and brought Jesus before Pilate. They brought charges against him, saying, We found this man misleading our people. He opposes the payment of taxes to Caesar and maintains that he is the Messiah, a king. With loud shouts, however, they persisted in calling for his crucifixion and their voices prevailed. The verdict of Pilate was that their demand should be granted. Hide me from the malicious crowd, the mob of evildoers. They sharpen their tongues like swords, ready their bows for arrows of poison words. <clears throat> Jesus accepts the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. You have redeemed the world. The soldiers of the governor took Jesus inside the praetorium and gathered the whole cohort around him. They stripped off his clothes and threw a scarlet military cloak about him. Weaving a crown out of thorns, they placed it on his head and a reed in his right hand. And kneeling before him, they mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. They spat upon him and took the reed and kept striking him on the head. And when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the cloak, dressed him in his own clothes, and led him off to crucify him. Like a lamb led to the slaughter, or a sheep before the shearers, he was silent and opened not his mouth. Jesus falls the first time. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. It was our infirmities that he bore, our sufferings that he endured. While we thought of him as stricken, as one smitten by God and afflicted. But he was pierced for our offenses, crushed for our sins, Upon him was a chastisement that makes us whole. By his stripes we were healed. In this tent we groan, longing to be further clothed with our heavenly habitation. Jesus meets his mother Mary. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. By your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. Rejoice with Jerusalem and be glad because of her, all you who love her. As nurslings, you shall be carried in her arms and fondled in her lap. As a mother comforts her son, so will I comfort you. Amen, amen, I say to you, you will weep and mourn. While the world rejoices, you will grieve, but your grief will become joy.
Simon helps Jesus carry the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. By your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. As they led Jesus away, they took hold of a certain Simon, a Cyrenian, who was coming in from the country, and after laying the cross on him, they made him carry it behind Jesus. Jesus said to his disciples, whoever wishes to come after me must deny himself, take up his cross and follow me. Veronica wipes the face of Jesus. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. By your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. A faithful friend is a sturdy shelter. He who finds one finds a treasure. A faithful friend is beyond price. No sum can balance his worth. I give you a new commandment. Love one another as I have loved you so you also should love one another. Jesus falls again under the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. By your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. The watchmen came upon me as they made their rounds in the city. They struck me and wounded me and took my mantle from me, the guardian of the walls. I adjure you, daughters of Jerusalem, if you find my lover, what shall you tell him? that I am faint with love. He humbled himself, becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. Jesus speaks to the women of Jerusalem. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. By your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. A large crowd of people followed Jesus, including many women who mourned and lamented him. Jesus turned to them and said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me. Weep instead for yourselves and for your children. Ruth said, do not ask me to abandon or forsake you, for wherever you go, I will go. Wherever you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people, and your God, my God. Jesus falls a third time. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. By your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. Amen, amen, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains just a grain of wheat. But if it dies, it produces much fruit. You have folded up my life like a weaver who serves the last thread. Like a swallow, I utter shrill cries. I moan like a dove. Jesus, weak and bruised and feeble, falls again, appears unable to complete his painful road.
Jesus is stripped of his garments. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. By your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. They brought Jesus to the place of Golgotha, which is translated the place of the skull. They gave him wine drugged with myrrh, but he did not take it. Then they crucified him and divided his garments by casting lots for them to see what each should take. Naked I came forth from my mother's womb, and naked shall I go back again. The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Jesus is crucified. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. By your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. When they came to the place called the skull, they crucified Jesus and the criminals there, one on his right, the other on his left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. Just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the desert, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, so that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. Jesus dies on the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. By your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. At noon, darkness came over the whole land until three o'clock in the afternoon. And at three o'clock, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lema sabachthani, which is translated, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last. I have told you this so that you might have peace in me. In the world you'll have trouble, but take courage. I have conquered the world. Jesus' mother and friends lower his body from the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. By your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. There was a virtuous and righteous man named Joseph, who, though he was a member of the council, had not consented to their plan of action. He came from the Jewish town of Arimathea and was waiting the kingdom of God. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus, after he had taken the body down, he wrapped it in a linen cloth. Come, all you who pass by the way, look and see whether there is any suffering like my suffering. Jesus' mother and friends lay his body in the tomb. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. By your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. Taking the body, Joseph wrapped it in a clean linen and laid it in his new tomb he had hewn in the rock. Then he rolled a huge stone across the entrance to the tomb 
and departed. My soul be at rest in God alone, from whom comes my hope. Jesus rises in glory, victorious over death. As the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to see the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven, approached, rolled back the stone, and sat upon it. Then the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid. I know that you are seeking Jesus the crucified. He is not here for he has been raised just as he said. Lord Jesus said, I will see you again and your hearts will rejoice and no one will take your joy away from you. Let us pray in the words our Savior gave us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. My friends, we have given witness to the life-giving passion of the Lord. Let us go in peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Good evening. Welcome to St. Mary's. Please join in our opening hymn number 471, Return to God. We'll do verses 1 and 2. Number 471. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace and peace of God our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Certainly welcome to all as we gather for Mass this evening. We um, hear about Jesus um, being uh, the, the woman caught in, a in adultery brought before him. He doesn't condemn her, but says, go and sin no more. So we come. We prepare for this sacred encounter with the Lord here even among us by calling to mind our sins and praying that Jesus doesn't condemn us but offers us forgiveness and mercy. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words in what I have done and in what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. By your help, we beseech you, Lord our God. May we walk eagerly in that same charity with which, out of love for the world, your Son handed himself over to death. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, who opens a way in the sea and a path in the mighty waters? who leads our chariots and horsemen, a, power a powerful army. 
till they lie prostrate together, never to rise, snuffed out and quenched like a wick. Remember not the events of the past, the things of long ago consider not. See, I am doing something new. Now it springs forth, do you not perceive it? In the desert I make a way, in the wasteland rivers. While beasts honor me, jackals and ostriches, for I put water in the desert and rivers in the wasteland for my chosen people to drink. The people who I formed for myself, that they might announce my praise. The word of the Lord. reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians, brothers and sisters, I consider everything as a loss because of the supreme good of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. For his sake I have accepted the loss of all things, and I consider them so much rubbish that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having any righteousness of my own based on the law, but that which comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God depending on faith to know him and the power of his resurrection and the sharing of his sufferings by being conformed to his death, if somehow I may attain the resurrection from the dead. It is not that I have already taken hold of it or have already attained perfect maturity, but I continue my pursuit in hope that I may possess it, since I have indeed 
been taken possession of by, Jesus, by Christ Jesus. Brothers and sisters, I for my part do not consider myself to have taken possession, just one thing, forgetting what lies behind, but straining forward to what lies ahead. I continue my pursuit toward the goal, the price of God's upward calling in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus went to the Mount of Olives, but early in the morning he arrived again in the temple area, and all the people started coming to him, and he sat down and taught them. Then the scribes and the Pharisees brought a woman who had been caught in adultery, and made her stand in the middle. They said to him, Teacher, this woman was caught in the very act of committing adultery. Now in the law, Moses commanded us to stone such women, so what do you say? They said this to test him so that they they could have some charge to bring against him. Jesus bent down and began to to write on the ground with his finger. But when they continued asking him, he straightened up and said to them, Let the one among you who is without sin be the first to throw a stone at her. Again he bent down and wrote on the ground, and in response they went away one by one, beginning with the elders. So he was left alone with a woman before him. Then Jesus straightened up and said to her, Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? She replied, No one, sir. Then Jesus said, Neither do I condemn you. Go, and from now on, do not sin any more. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. You might notice in church the Um, processional cross, a couple of the other crosses and statues. We don't have a bunch of them around here, but they're um, draped in a purple cloth. And so in some churches, Catholic churches, that's the tradition in these last weeks of Lent that we do that as a a reminder that we're drawn closer to Good Friday when Jesus will be put in the tomb and sort of removed from us. Also, it maybe helps us to um, focus more upon uh, Christ and the final preparations to encounter him and his passion, his suffering, his death, and then at Easter, when we look forward to that glorious celebration of resurrection. In in the readings today, as we continue on during this season of Lent, the readings speak about repentance and forgiveness. Last week, we heard the account of the prodigal son, the one who demands his share of the inheritance, goes away and squanders it all, comes to his senses and returns see, and, and with a repentant heart. And we hear about the, upon his return, the father who welcomes him not with harsh condemnation and rejection, but with a loving embrace and a celebration. Today we hear about the woman caught in adultery who was brought to Jesus. This account, along with the other readings today, speak many things to us. 
but particularly about that forgiveness and mercy, about the new things God offers and, and wants to do, has done, and, and wants to continue to do in us. Dr. Carl Menninger, he's a well-known psychiatrist. I remember um, in seminary days that there were a couple books that we used as part of his uh, our, our, our teach, uh, teaching and learning about morality. Well, one of the books that he wrote is titled, Whatever Became of Sin? And um, I, I came across this again recently, a reference to it, that, that it brought me back, that, that, that he, uh, in this book, he um, points out this, uh, or he gives this kind of scene. He reported about a scene that happened in, on a busy street corner in Chicago. There were, um, appears that there was this man, sort of stern but plainly dressed, who appeared on this corner, street corner, a busy place, and as, as people were were um, moving by, walking, going about their business, every once in a while he would raise up his arm and point out in kind of a stern look and utter a simple word, guilty. And then he would put his arm back down. And a little while later he'd point, raise up his arm, guilty. You know, and, 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 it, and, and, and then so Carl Menninger, he spoke about the reaction that um, some of the people, as he did that, you know, could see that he was sort of pointing at them. Some stared, some started to laugh. You know, then some stopped and hesitated a little bit, looked around a little bit uneasy, and then continued on their way. There was even one, one person who, a passerby, who turned to a companion with them and exclaimed, but how did he know? You know, that somehow it's like, how did he know? So we do not have to have an eccentric street corner preacher point out at us, raise his hand, and point out guilty. We have our conscience that hopefully it continues to be formed along the lines of the commandments and the things of God that speaks to us in our hearts about those failings, about those sins, those ways that we turn away from God in which we are guilty. God always calls us to exhibit a deep and abiding love um, for, for God and for our neighbor. Of course, as human beings, we do not always do this. We fail to fully keep the commandments and to love as we should. God would have every right to point out and announce to us guilty and condemn us to a horrible death. But over and over, we hear repeated in the Bible that God desires not for the sinner to die in their sin, but to be converted and live, to experience the abundance of life that God, God desires and, and wants all to experience. So in the readings today, in the first reading from the Old Testament from the prophet Isaiah, it's one of those examples Isaiah, um, at this time, in this part of the book, is speaking to the Israelites during their Babylonian captivity. So for years, they've lived in exile. They've been in dire straits. The, the prophet Isaiah offers them hope, calling them to remember the ways that God allowed the Israelite people to escape that slavery and harsh treatment in, in Egypt, you know, as he parted the sea and they were able to pass through on dry land, or even more gloriously, how then as the Israelites wandered through the desert or the wilderness, how God provided water from the rock. You know, that's like, how could that happen? God provided in order that they might not perish in the desert, but it would have refreshment and live and could continue on their journey of holiness and entering into the promised land. And God will, as Isaiah goes on, saying and God will do even greater things than these. God will provide a life-giving water, what we know as baptism that we don't have to go out in the desert to find, but is offered to us as that, that source of um, uh, being washed of sin and created anew in that divine image and spirit of God himself. So, so not only just the Israelite people, but people throughout the world and in every, every nation is offered this life-giving water of baptism to become this new person in, in Christ. So, so Isaiah, so he speaks to the people of all times of those new things constantly, the ways that God doesn't want us to die, but to experience his life. And of course, in the gospel account of the woman caught in adultery, it's another very clear example where God, or in this case, Jesus, does not want people to be rejected and written off. Rather, Jesus proclaims the tremendous mercy of God. This account um, often speaks to us at many levels. I don't know, you know, it's probably familiar as it started. It's like, oh yeah, I've heard that. It's a familiar passage to us. First of all, um, many commentators point out that the scribes and Pharisees, as they bring this woman before Jesus, aren't really concerned about her. You know, it's, it's simply a, an effort to try to trap Jesus. 
It's like no matter how he responds, they'll have something to accuse him of so that then somehow they can ignore him and get rid of it. You know, if he says, yes, you should be stoned, well, that seems to go every, against everything that he taught about love and forgiveness and mercy. But if he says not, you know, then somehow he would be disobeying the, the Roman law, the law of the land. So they would have something to accuse him. So, so it's like, the, in, in reality, they're not concerned about this woman herself, but more so about ways to find fault and to discredit Jesus. Hopefully for us, that we do not look for excuses or a way to ignore Jesus or dismiss him, to say, oh, that couldn't possibly pertain to my life today. <laughs> that call to love your neighbor or keep the commandments or fulfill the other things um, that through the church continues to be taught to us. Hopefully we're not looking for excuses or ways to put that aside, say, oh, oh I, you know, I don't care what Jesus said long ago or what the church teaches, I know better. And I'm gonna find you know, ways to justify what, what, what I wanna do. So hopefully that's not us of trying to reject Jesus or set him aside. The account also, it speaks to us of, of, of at times um, feeling accused by, by others, whether that is in fact the reality or whether it's sometimes just our perception. It's like, okay, I, I know I've sinned, I've done something wrong, and I feel that everybody's looking at me and knows it. You know, so, so just that, so, so like the woman brought before Jesus, maybe we at times feel like that, condemned and accused and you know, of that perception of, of, of others. Jesus, as the account goes on, um, cleverly responds not to get drawn into this action of condemning or accusing her. He simply bends down and begins writing in the sand, sort of ignoring their kind of trap or, you know, their effort to condemn her. So what about for us? If we find ourselves in a situation where maybe we find ourselves condemning or accusing another person or place in conversation where that's happening, what if we, I don't know if we can bend down and write in sand, but, but, but if we found a way just to be silent you know, and to pray that somehow God's grace and love would, would reign forth. So, and, and, and then finally, I mean, that, 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 that's hard for us to do. Um, but, but then as, as uh, when, it, when Jesus is, is um, pressed further, he responds with a line that also is familiar to us. He says, let the one among you who is without sin be the first to throw a stone at her. This really is hard for us. I think our culture, our world today, there are indeed many problems, you know, and so much of it leads us to automatically cast judgment and condemn others and, you know, that don't think the same way or, you know, dress the same way or caught up in some bad activity. So there's so much of our culture and our world that leads us to, to want to respond in that way. But we know over and over that we're called not to. As Paul says, we're called to somehow this higher calling to life in Christ and, and allowing that reign and goodness of God to, to, um, to, 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 to spread throughout the world. There's a, let, let me kind of, as, as I, I come toward the end here, let, let me share just another real, I found it a very powerful story that um, speaks about just that, you know, it's like we, you know, so much of that, that stuff of condemning others or, or pointing out fault or seeing things of others is that we can't know. We can't know exactly what all another person has gone through, you know, influences they've had, struggles that they have in their life. We can't possibly know. So, so this is a story that sort of addresses that. It, it, it revolves around the, the, some events for the great emperor Napoleon, who was a, a great emperor in, in, in Europe in the late 17 and, and early 1800s during the French Revolution. So, um, so it happened that when he was invading Russia, when I, I, I read that line, I thought, Gee, is that coincidence that I came across this and we have this um, Russian invasion now? But, but anyways, going back to, to Napoleon. So it happened when he was invading Russia. He became separated from his army and, and the enemy's guards were chasing him. He, he managed to slip into the shop of a person who prepared and sold animal furs. The, the furrier was kind to Napoleon and hid him under a pile of furs. When the arresting guards stormed into the shop looking for Napoleon, the furrier did not betray his hiding place. They threw furs around and even poked their swords into the piles of fur where Napoleon was hidden, but did not find him. A little bit later, Napoleon's army caught up with him and, and Napoleon came out of his hiding. As he did, the furrier, the owner of that store, spoke to Napoleon. He said, excuse me for asking this question of such a great man but what is it like to be under those furs knowing that the next moment 
could have been your last. Napoleon was indignant and asked, how could an insignificant person like you question me, the great emperor Napoleon? Guards, and Napoleon then continued in sort of a harsh voice, guards, take this imprudent man outside and execute him. I myself will give the command to fire. So the guards grabbed the poor furrier, bound and blindfolded him, dragged him outside and stood him against the wall of his fur shop. He could hear the guards preparing their rifles. He could feel the tears run down his cheeks and his whole body begin to shake. Then he heard Napoleon clear his throat and called out slowly, ready, aim. And after a long period of silence, he heard footsteps approach him and the blindfold was stripped from his eyes. He found himself looking into the eyes of Napoleon who said softly, now you know. Napoleon helped that furrier to know what it was like really to be in that position that he was in where at a moment his life could have been taken. This story suggests to us that we don't always know what it's like to be in someone else's skin. And in spite of not knowing, we often are quick to make judgments about other people. We think if we were that person, we would do better. So if somehow they're worse off or they're a poor excuse for a person than, than what, what I am. In the gospel, when Jesus is left alone with a woman, we hear clearly that he does not condemn her, nor does he condone the sin. Um, he, he forgives her and says, neither do I condemn you. Go and from now on, avoid that sin. As we continue on our journey toward Easter, to renew our baptismal promises or to be baptized and experience the forgiveness in life um, that is offered to us in the risen Christ, may we strive to focus on our own faults and sins and by the power of the sacrament of reconciliation and the many other ways that God has communicated to us, may we experience not condemnation and rejection, but that tremendous love and forgiveness. May we, like Paul, as he says in the second reading, strive always for that higher calling, no matter the sufferings, the trials, the joys. May we strive always for that higher calling, the fullness of life in Christ Jesus. We profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and life for the world to come. Amen. This time during these um, last weeks of Lent, we also in the church um, celebrate what's referred to as the scrutiny. So um, special prayers and, and uh, rites celebrated for the RCIA, those who are preparing in the church to join us at, at Easter. So I invite now to come forward, the ones from, from our parish here who um, have been participating in this and look forward to receiving the sacraments at Easter. Philip Richmond.
Stephanie Bonnell. Amanda Herman. And John Sessler. Let us pray for these elect whom God has chosen. May the grace of the sacraments conform them to Christ in his passion and resurrection and enable them to triumph over the bitter fate of death. So for them and for all of our needs, we now lift them up to God in our prayers. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, Bishop Thomas, and all who lead the church, may they proclaim the truth and love of Christ that continues to renew the face of the earth. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For world leaders and in all positions of authority, may they be open to the wisdom of God as they strive to promote peace and equality for all people. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an end to the war and destruction in Ukraine, may God protect those who are in harm's way. May the efforts of many people bring some measure of comfort, and may all the people be able to live in peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For people who face legal trials and all who stand accused of some crime or failing, may people everywhere be treated justly and always know of the forgiveness offered to them in Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For students, especially those from our parishes who will receive the sacrament of confirmation this Sunday, by the power of the Holy Spirit, may they be strengthened in their faith and be open to all the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who will be welcomed into the church at Easter, especially Philip, Stephanie, Amanda, and John, may these last weeks of Lent be a time of inspiration and many blessings. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who suffer from disease, loneliness, or isolation, or rejection, may they experience the warm embrace of God's love for them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who have died, especially Daryl Thiel, may all the faithful departed be welcomed into the loving arms of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the prayers written in the parish book of intentions and our personal prayers. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we continue to offer our special prayers for these elect, that these elect may be given the faith to acknowledge Christ as the resurrection and the life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that they may be freed from sin and grow in the holiness that leads to eternal life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that we too at Easter may again be confirmed in our hope of rising to life with Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer and that the whole world which God has created in love may flower in faith and charity and so receive new life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer, and I pray. Father, source of all life, in giving life to the living, you seek out the image of your glory, and in raising the dead, you reveal your unbounded power. Rescue these elect from the tyranny of death, for they long for new life through baptism and the sacraments. Free them from the slavery of Satan, the source of sin and death, who seeks to corrupt the world you created and saw to be good. Place them under the reign of your beloved Son, that they may share in the power of his resurrection and give witness to your glory before all. And sponsors, if you'll now place your hand on their shoulder as I offer this final prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, you commanded Lazarus to step forth alive from his tomb and by your own resurrection freed all people from death. We pray for these, your servants, who eagerly approach the sacraments of the church and hunger for the banquet of life. 
Do not let the power of death hold them back, for by their faith they will share in the triumph of your resurrection, for you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. I invite you all to, so normally they do this at the 8.30 Sunday morning Mass, so some might, this might be new, but so certainly to um, continue to, to raise them up in your prayers as they make their final preparations to join with us at Easter. So you may now um, return to your, your places, know of our continued prayers, and looking forward to the day when you'll be able to join us fully here at the Lord's table. Now please be seated for the offertory. Our offertory hymn is number 584. Hosea, come back to me. Number 584.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Hear us, Almighty God, and having instilled in your servants the teachings of the Christian faith, graciously purify them by the working of this sacrifice. Through Christ our Lord, amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for you have given your children a sacred time for the renewing and purifying of their hearts that freed from disordered affections, they may so deal with the things of this passing world as to hold rather to the things that eternally endure. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. And for the Eucharistic prayer, once again, I'll use the special prayer for reconciliation. It's the second one of those. You, therefore, Almighty Father, we bless through Jesus Christ, your Son, who comes in your name. He himself is the word that brings salvation, the hand you extend to sinners, the way by which your peace is offered to us. When we ourselves had turned away from you, on account of our sins, you brought us back to be reconciled, O Lord, so that converted at last to you, we might love one another through your Son, whom for our sake you handed over to death. And now celebrating the reconciliation Christ has brought us, we entreat you, sanctify these gifts by the outpouring of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, whose command we fulfill when we celebrate these mysteries. For when about to give his life to set us free, as he reclined at supper, he himself took bread into his hands, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, on that same evening, he took the chalice of blessing in his hands, confessing your mercy, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The 
mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until Celebrating, therefore, the memorial of the death and resurrection of your Son, who left us this pledge of his love, we offer you what you have bestowed on us, the sacrifice of perfect reconciliation. Holy Father, we humbly beseech you to accept us also together with your Son, and in this saving banquet, graciously to endow us with his very Spirit, who takes away everything that estranges us from one another. May he make your church a sign of unity and an instrument of your peace among all people, and may he keep us in communion with Francis, our Pope, and Daniel, our Bishop, and all the bishops and your entire people. Just as you have gathered us now at the table of your Son, so also bring us together with the glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph and all the saints, with our brothers and sisters, and those of every race and tongue who have died in your friendship. Bring us to share with them the unending banquet of unity in a new heaven and a new earth where the fullness of your peace will shine forth in Christ Jesus our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Please join in our communion hymn number 579, There is a Wideness, Be Merciful, number 579.
Let us pray. We pray, Almighty God, that we may always be counted among the members of Christ in whose body and blood we have communion, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Just a couple announcements and reminders that tomorrow we do have confirmation here. So there's a special 1030 um, Sunday morning mass. Um, Monsignor Kabaki will be here to, to celebrate that for us. So it'll be the students from St. Mary's and from St. Michael um, will be here together for that 1030 celebration. So keep them in prayer. Um, anybody's welcome to attend. So um, there are a, a good number of the students and their sponsors and all, but anybody's welcome to uh, attend that special um, Mass of Confirmation. So that's tomorrow. Um, we also will have the regular 8.30 a.m. morning Mass here and then the 10.30 a.m. Mass at St. Michael in Hicksville. So those Masses will go on as normal. And then please see the bulletin. For this coming week, I have Days of Grace on Monday at uh, Blakesley at St. Joseph um, and then on Thursday here. And so then on those days, I'll be available in the confessional on the even-numbered hours of the day. So take advantage of that opportunity for the Lord's mercy and forgiveness offered in confession. The Lord be with you. Amen. Bow down your, your head and pray for the blessing. Bless, O Lord, your people who long for the gift of your mercy and grant that what at your prompting they desire, they may receive by your generous gift through Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Holy Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do you, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the divine power thrust into hell, Satan and all the other evil spirits who wander through the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Our closing hymn is number 643. We acclaim the cross of Jesus. Number 643. <laughs> to